getting you ready for something bigger than yourself. He like you to believe that other people can have their breakthrough, but you will not have your breakthrough. I come to prophesy the devil is a liar. God said that you are the head and not the tail. I come to prophesy the devil is a liar. When men mock you, God is celebrating you. When men scorn you, God is lifting you up. God is raising you up. God is celebrating you. Acts 10:38. How God anoint Jesus of Nazareth, are you there? With the Holy Ghost. Say with the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about the purpose of the anointing tonight. We need this fresh oil. We need the anointing to help us. In these last days, we need the anointing. We need the Holy Ghost. David said, thou hast anointed my head with fresh oil. Are you in this place here? God wants to anoint your head with fresh oil. Say, Holy Spirit, anoint me tonight with fresh oil. Amen. But it said here in, in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost. And with power. You see, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost. And with dunamis. Say dunamis. He was anointed with dunamis. Now the word anoint means to rub. To smear. It literally means to wear a coat. Amen. You have a coat with power. And when the devil smelled that coat, smelled that oil, he, he leave town. He leave your family alone. He leave your home alone. Sickness have to leave because of the oil that's on you. Because of this glory that's on you. So the Bible said that the Holy Spirit anoint Jesus. God anoint Jesus with the Holy Ghost, amen, and with power. Say with power. Say with power. So the word anoint means to, to smear, to rub, to wear as a coat. And because he was anointed, the Bible said he went about doing good. Which means one of the proof that you have the anointing, you will do good. You will help make people's life tasteful. You, you put smiles on people's face. You cannot be anointed and just sit around and just wait for more. You have to always want to pour out. Pour out and the devil. Pour out and negative situation. Pour out and mean you release the anointing. Wherever you go, you release it. You release it. For example, I remember years ago, the Holy Ghost spoke to one day. said, watch Apostle Charles and see how he operates. Just watch him. Just watch him. So one day, one day he, he had this cough. He was coughing. <coughs> coughing. So I'm watching him to see how he deal with this cough. He put his hand on his chest. He said, loose. And the cough decided to loose. I said, I like this. You see, he released the anointing. Say, I can release the anointing. You see, see, the anointing is meant to be released. I said, I like that. He didn't put up with this nonsense. He put his hand in the chest. He said, loose. It stopped immediately. I said, okay, that's how we deal with cough. He said, loose. Amen. So, when the anointing is upon you, you will use it. You will use it. Amen. Because it is dunamis. It is miracle power. It can break the yokes. Come on. It can break bondage. Hallelujah. 
one lady, um, she is from, from the U.S. down south. And she said, Pastor Rick, ever since I've been, I've been, she said, I've been a Baptist all my life. And um, I didn't even know that. That's why I said this morning, we Pentecostals, well, I didn't say we, come on, I'm a Pentecostal. The Pentecostal movement have created more problems with the Holy Spirit. And, and the Baptist think it's, it's, it's only for the Pentecostal. Come on. And then we, we have exalt tongues over Jesus. And, and what happened is that when a Baptist hear about tongues, they say, well, this is not my doctrine. But it's not a doctrine thing. It's a kingdom thing. Are you following me here? So she said, I, I, I was Baptist all the time. But you made a statement on Facebook that this, this thing is for everybody. She said, I've been saved all my life. He said, for the first time, I begin to speak in tongues. Come on. I begin to speak in tongues. I said, my life has been so different. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. He said, no limits. He said, no limits. I see increase all around me. He said, no limits. You see, every time you see limits in your life, it's time to release the Holy Ghost. It's time to release the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you know last time, this is so beautiful. There was a man that came to Night of Miracles in Vernon. I don't know, three weeks ago, brothers? Three weeks ago? Yeah, he was all crippled up, all twisted up. <laughs> He's been coming to church now. He's completely healed up. He came this morning with a nice coat. I'm like, is that the same person? Is that, no, is that the same person? I told him it was the same person. He said, when the glory comes upon you, it makes you to shine. He started to glow. He started to glow. Because see, when the glory comes on you, you recognize there is, there is divinity on the inside of you. There's God on the inside of you. And there's some things you used to do. You just cannot do them any longer. Because you're always trying to find expression. How can I express this beautiful God that's on the inside of me? He came wearing this nice coat. I didn't ask him to change his clothes. I didn't ask him to change. He come and he's all healed up now, walking around. Ha, glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, so we need to release the anointing. So I need to release the anointing. Psalms 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I'm excited about tonight. There's something in my spirit. There's a word in my spirit. Ah, there's a word in my spirit. I want to release over your life. That you're going to cause you to have a great week. I said, there's a word in my belly. I want to release on you tonight that will cause you to have a great week. It's a great week. He said, but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with what? With, with fresh oil. I shall be anointed. God going to rub something on me. He going to cloak me with something beautiful. Amen. So I can manifest the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So I can, I can manifest the, the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. Can you lift your hands up again just to just, just, just pull on that fresh oil that is here. Come on, just pull on that fresh oil. Lift your hands up to heaven and just pull on that fresh oil that is here. Hey, Lebroco, just pull on that fresh oil that is here. Spirit of God, we love you. As the Holy Ghost, we love you. We, we really appreciate you. We really appreciate you. We, we anticipate something awesome would happen to us on the inside. Now let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 19. 
Revelation 19. The Lord said, open up my mind to something. Revelation 19 verse 10. Revelation 19. Are you here? Verse 10. <clears throat> this is John. He, he is in the spirit. Let me, let, me, let me find it in my Bible. I want to make sure I, I have it properly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 10 says, can I read verse 10 for me? One, two, three, go. Read verse 10 for me. I mean, verse 9 for me. One, two, three, go. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Whew. One more time. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. These are the true sayings of God. What I'm about to tell you are the true sayings of God. What I'm about to tell you, this angel is talking to John. And he's saying, what I'm about to tell you, Hallelujah. Are you here? Say the true sayings of God. He said these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou doest it not. I am a fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of who? Of Jesus. Are you there? Verse 10. And I fell at his feet and worshipped him. Because this angel had so much glory and, and, and him. And John said, this is so beautiful. And John decided to worship him. You don't worship angels. But you worship God. And he fell on it, but the angel revealed some powerful insight to John that we can learn today. And I fell at his feet and worshipped him. And he said unto me, see thou doest it not. For I am a fellow servant and a brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Say, I will worship God. Say, I will worship God. I will worship God. Oh my goodness. For the testimony, for the testimony of Jesus, who is the spirit of what? A prophecy. He said, worship God because the testimony of Jesus. Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus. Is the spirit of prophecy. Said the spirit of prophecy. He said there's such thing called the spirit of prophecy. And when you, when you declare the testimony of Jesus. The spirit of prophecy can be activated in the very atmosphere. Oh, who am I talking to here? He said the spirit of, of Jesus is the, is the testimony. The screen is off. Can you put the screen on here? I want to be able to <laughs> flow. Yeah, but I have to keep. I bind every devil distraction tonight. Because we're gonna, God has a word for us tonight. Who want to prophesy more? Who want to see more visions? Who want to prophesy mountains out of the way? Who want to speak and the devil listen to you? He said, number one, worship God. Worship God. Say, I'll worship God. 
if you want to be someone that have the spirit of prophecy in you, you must be a worshiper. You must fall in love with Jesus. You must love in him. You must care about him. And as you do that, he said here, the spirit, the testimony of Jesus will activate the spirit of prophecy. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You see, the father's intention is that he desire that as we worship him, as we magnify him, his goal is for him to rub his glory on us. He desire for we to encounter him in worship. Worship was never supposed to be the, the foundation for the preaching. It was never supposed to be just for, to get the preacher ready. Worship. The aim to worship is for you to have encounters with God. And when you worship, God looks through a church service and he looked to see whose heart, come on, is after him. And when Papa God finds a believer, a church, a minister, a preacher, who heart is after him, God says, I have to visit this person. I, I, his, his, his heart is, is pulling on me. When God visits this person, there are some things will start to happen in your life personally. When you encounter the glory, the glory that you encounter will, will affect you. I said the glory that you encounter will affect you. Hey, follow me here. And the glory you encounter will testify of the Father. Like something really happened to you. When you encounter the glory of God, the glory that you encounter, that moment start to testify of the Father. Are you with me? So here you are, here you are. You come to service. And, and you just receive the presence of God. And you pull on the presence of God. Sometimes you may feel it in, the, in your physical body. Sometimes you don't feel it. It doesn't really matter. When your spirit encounters the glory, that encounter testifies of your father. It tells the devil, this one belongs to God. You don't touch, oh my God. You don't touch this one. This one belongs to God. The present prophesied about Jesus. So here you are. You go to sleep. You go to sleep. Physically, you're out. But you know, you, you, your soul is open. Your spirit is open. That's why sometimes you could, while you're sleeping, you have a dream. And the dream is so real, it, it can affect your heart. You, your heart can start to beat. Even though you haven't left the room. Because you have an encounter with some, it could be a nightmare or an experience with God. Now, here is what happened. See, I'm listening. Okay, I want you to catch this. Okay, it would affect your faith. And your faith will start to work while you're sleeping. My quest today is to share this with you where you have confidence that while I'm sleeping, while I'm resting, my faith is doing warfare for me. I said, while you're sleeping, while you're driving your car, while you're doing the dishes, while you're taking the kids, you may not even be conscious of what you're doing, but your faith, the, the experience you receive tonight, the encounter, the impartation is fighting for you, come on, is even go ahead of you into 2025 to fight for you to make the crooked place straight. Just I'm more than a conqueror. So the, the glory that you experience testify is like someone in court testifying. Like they say, yes, I was there. 
I saw the crime. And based on the credibility of the one that is testifying, the, the judge, they can accept their testimony. John is saying, hey, what I'm telling you is true. That the testimony of Jesus, when you experience Jesus in worship, it will prophesy for you. It will, it will work on your behalf. Do you hear me here? It will work on your behalf. It will prophesy while you are sleeping. This thing is talking. Demon, back off. Satan, back off. I mean the glory, the impartation is doing warfare for you while you are sleeping. So I need impartation. So I need impartation. So I need impartation. When you encounter the glory, the glory that you encounter begin to testify on your behalf. So it's not just like you come to church, you say, wow, that was a good service. Yes, that's true. But you need to understand that thing stays with you. It follows you. Amen. It follows you. And then it starts to work on your behalf. It starts to defend you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a man of God. I'm trying to get him. I'm trying to work something up in him. This man, he, he go to churches. One of his um, a friend of, of, of where well, I, I met her on Facebook. And um, he told me about this pastor. He, he, he's a multi-millionaire. He's okay to be a multi-millionaire. Especially to be a pastor. He's okay. But this man is loaded. He's loaded. And he goes to small churches. Doesn't take no offering. He just flying there by himself. And his private jet just land. And God told him, go to places. Take no money just to empower my people. Just to empower my people. I don't want nothing from them. God told him, go to churches. And this man moving the prophetic. He moving the power of God. He said, I don't want nothing from God's people. I come to impart something to them. I follow me here. So there's such thing called impartation. There's something. So I want you to get this. That when you encounter the glory, that encounter testify of the Father. It, it, it speaks. It brags and, and daddy God. It, it, it tells it, it, it tell a story in the realm of the spirit that God is good. Secondly, the encounter that you experience, oh my goodness, it displays his perfect character. It displays God's character. It displays his mighty divine qualities. It, this is a display. And all of a sudden, God qualities start to work in your life. The quality of faith. The quality of boldness. Because you have encountered God. And there is a residue of his glory. And he has been converted now into a faith that I will not quit because I haven't seen the manifestation as yet. It manifests a, an attribute of God within your spirit. Oh, come on, talk to me here. So, one, when the glory comes, it, it, and you have an encounter, it testifies of the Father. As it testified the Father. And it display his character. 
it display Daddy God's character and his divine faculties. So it's not just good to just come to church and experience something. There's something deeper that is happening. Because there's a, there's a, um, something is happening on your behalf. You know, years ago, I, I went to, I went to um, the Mosaic Bookstore downtown. A bunch of Christian people went to downtown. Go. I like to read, so I went there. And I started to look. Look. I just kept looking at them. You know, I, and I become very, you know, self-conscious. Why this woman keep looking at me? You know, I'm not stealing anything. Why she keep looking at me? So she keep looking at me, and I, I walk this way, and she keep following me. And I'm like, okay, this is getting weird. So I decide that I'm not buying nothing. You know, I didn't take nothing. So I leave the store. And she keep following me still. I said, this is weird. So I, I walk very fast, and she walked very fast. So I walk down on Water Street. She said, stop. I said, what do you, what do you need? He said, just explain the light around you. I'm telling you, when, now I've never seen a light. But in the realm of the spirit, come on. There's something coming out of you. The father is testifying to the world that he, he's been with you. The father is testifying. Hey, this one belonged to me. This child belonged to me. You touch this child, I'll break your neck. You bet. He's still a God of justice. He, to, he told Pharaoh, you touch my firstborn, I kill your firstborn. Read your Bible. You know, in these last days, this, this, this kissy, kissy God that you serve, no, he's, he's still Jehovah. He told Pharaoh, you touch my firstborn, I kill your firstborn. He said, I will destroy kings for their sake. And we need this God in these last days with all this wickedness. Devils want to put our kids on pornography. We need the God of justice. That can rise up in mothers and fathers and pastors and churches that say, enough is enough. And God, move on our words. Come on. Hallelujah. So we see here that, that um, it displayed his, perfect, his perfected character and his mighty qualities. His qualities. One of his qualities is, 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 is faith. His boldness. God asks you to, to do something, to start a business, and there's challenges. All of a sudden, boldness rises up. He says, Hey, girl, it's okay. You will do this. All of a sudden, the, the fear is gone, the timidity is gone. One of his characters also is, is, is wisdom. Hallelujah. Are you in this place here? And we need this. Are you, are you here? Come on, lift your hands up to heaven. One more time. Ah, ha, ha. Mando, roba, ba, ba, ba. Bata, broko, one of the quality of God is his presence. Say his presence. Say his presence. It's a quality. And um, I want to share some, some, some thoughts with you uh, along that line. One of the, the benefit, I can say, of the, of the anointing, it brings profit. Say prophet. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse verse seven. First Corinthians twelve, verse seven. Hallelujah. He said the manifestation of the spirit. Read it for me. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Huh. Ah. 
Come on. Do what? It means there will be improvement in your life. So it means the glory comes to bring improvement. It means that the end of the day, if you keep soaking and drinking, there should be improvement in your life. Hello, somebody. It will show up in your smile. In your greetings, in your even in your hug. We in Zimbabwe years ago, and Mama Ev, um, a lady, checked herself out from the from her, from the psych ward. She came to my church here in Zimbabwe, and um, she was paralyzed on the left side, and she had a mental mental problem. And Mama Ev, Mama Ev, I'm saying that that the anointing bring profit. It will it will it will cause. Your life to improve. Come on, talk to me. As you decide to soak on the anointing, as you decide to, 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 to embrace the anointing and drink the anointing, you should see an improvement in your life. Oh, hallelujah. So this, this mama came to the meetings and I was preaching. So I have a team, you know, go and pray for everyone. And um, I, I was watching this, just watching this. And Mama Ev just, Ev Romick, you ever remember Ev, Ev Romick, one, one of the most sweetest women I've ever met? She just hugging the woman. She's in prayer. Just hugging her. I'm watching the woman. I'm watching Mama Ev. And she just took her left hand. That was paralyzed. And she just reached and hugged Mama Ev back. And the people started to scream. I'm like, why are they screaming? Then I heard the story. Because she was paralyzed by a stroke. And all Mama Ev did, she hugged her. And all of a sudden, the glory and Mama Ev life start to testify of the goodness of God. I said, the God, the goodness and you have to prophesy to the whole world that your God is real. I said, what you carry need to start to prophesy, start to prophesy about you and about your God. She was completely healed. Completely healed. Completely healed. She went back into the workforce. Had a beautiful job. I went back to Zimbabwe a year later. Pastor Ephraim came to me and said, man of God, I have a surprise for you. He said, this woman, this woman that was in a psych ward and was paralyzed. I said, yes. She wanted to buy you a whole wardrobe of suits. I say, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. He bought, she bought me shoes. She bought me a suit. I, I bought five suits from Zimbabwe. And the suit was also testifying. Come on, talk to me here. They were testifying of the goodness of God. God wants to show the world to you. And through you that he's real. But you need the glory. I say you need the glory. Oh my goodness. So the, the anointing bring profit. It bring profit. It bring increase. It, bring, it brings promotion. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Then number two. The anointing. I, I must spend a couple weeks on this one. The anointing calls you to see. I said the anointing would cause you to what? To see. It would cause you to see. It would cause you to see what belonged to you. You just discern that, hey, this is mine. God can use me to do this. Who am I talking to again? I, I, I'm giving you some of the some of the benefits of the encounter that you receive. One of the encounter, one of the benefits is that it, 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 it brings profit. Number two, it causes you to see. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Verse, verse 16. Hallelujah. See, I can see. Revelation chapter 3 verse 16. Let me see if that's the verse here. There's one so good. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 18, I'm sorry. 18. Read it for me. Verse 18. Woo, read it from one, two, three, go. Ha, ha. <laughs> Woo, yeah. 
Uh-huh. That thou may what? See. He want to anoint your eyes. Say, Lord, anoint my own eyes. Anoint my eyes with the anointing. You see, why would he say he want to anoint your eyes? Which means there's something that is on your eyes that is stopping you from seeing. Which means there's a blockage. There's a yoke. And the anointing oak breaks the yoke. The yoke of blindness, spiritual blindness. And, and when the yoke is broken, you start to see. You start to see what's in the room. You start to see. Do you know, do you know there are angels in this room here? I, I will teach you sometime how to recognize angels. Come on. Yeah, they're here. But sometimes, so I remember before, before. I heard a man of God talk about these things. And, you know, I said, oh, that was so beautiful. But I, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing. This will change your ministry. Am I talking to anybody? You need to see what belongs to you. Because when you see, you cannot doubt. When you see, doubt is kicked out. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, he said, doubt not in your heart. Which means that you can come to a place in your walk with God that there is no doubt. And that happened because the Holy Ghost gave you visions. So you can see. And no one doubts what he sees. No one doubts what he sees. And when you start to see there's a boldness, there's a confidence. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up to heaven. Say, Lord, anoint my eyes. Anoint my eyes so I can see. Whew. Do you remember one of the things the Lord started to show me is that there are blessings, there are breakthroughs, in in places in in obscure places but i have to know to see you follow me here let's say for example the story of the bible and in a man a woman came to elijah and and said to elijah elisha say uh, my husband died and he he left all his debt behind and um and they want to take my kids are slaves. Right? So Elisha made a statement to her. She said, what do you have in your house? You see, the blessing was there already. But she couldn't see it. One of the greatest gifts to have is, to, is the gift to recognize the blessing. It's to recognize the blessing. And you need eyes to see that. She told Elisha, I have nothing in the house. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what thou hast in the house. She responded, I have nothing. Because she couldn't see the blessing. And she said, that handmaiden have have not have anything in the house save a pot of oil. But that was the oil that God used. Who am I talking to? That was the oil that God used to multiply. What do you have in your house? Everybody see a wooden cross. Insignificant. God said, that cross is going to save the whole world. So God want to give you eyes to, this makes sense. He want to give you eyes to, to recognize the blessing that's in the house. So start to make that confession. Lord, give me eyes to see. 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 One thing that God does, 
I remember I, I used some very different. I, can I talk to you a, a long list line for a few minutes? Because it will help you in your walk with God. And it will bring to you, a, it will unlock your faith. I said it would unlock your faith. And it will produce within you a confidence. Hallelujah. Like for example, a story the same Elijah. He was, he helped a man who had leprosy. An army general had leprosy. And um, Elisha told him to dip, dip in the Jordan River seven times. And, and he was healed. But then his people become ungrateful and forget what God did for him. And two chapters later, the same nation that, Eli that Elisha helped came to arrest Elisha. But the Bible said that while Elisha was there relaxing, his, his servant came out and he saw with his physical eyes all of the, the whole mountain surrounded with, with chariots and horses to capture Elisha. And he was nervous. And he told Elisha, Elias, Elias. What can we do? He made a statement. There is more with us. There is more with us. I know they say you have cancer. But I could see healing in five days. Oh my God. I know they say there is no money. But I could see prophetically that money is around the corner. Therefore, I'm going to act like money is around the corner. Because I could see it. Whatever I see, I can be whole. Whatever I see, I can become it. And Satan's strategy is to have us to see the natural. And the natural bind us. And give us and bring negative emotions around us. But God is saying, he wants to anoint your eyes with the anointing. So you can see what God already make a way for you. You can see that provision is already available for you. You can see there is a ram already there. Yes, Isaac is here. You want to kill Isaac. But there is a ram God already prepared. So you have to kill Isaac. Prophetic eyes. He said he wants to anoint your eyes. And Elisha said, there's more with us. He said, God, I see you got to be kidding. There is one, there is two. There is chariots of fire, army to capture us. The Bible says, the prophet says, Lord, he didn't say give him new eyes. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Which means when your eyes are open, when your eyes are anointed, whatever yoke was there, when the yoke is gone, you will see your potential. You will see your provision. You will see what, oh my goodness. You will see what belongs to you. And, and, and the natural will not steal your joy. Now, if you know already prophetically that that um that money, uh, let's use money. Can money make you happy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If right now there is no money in the account right now, and, and if you look at that, it can bring discouragement. But if you see prophetically that Monday morning. <laughs> something will change. You wouldn't allow the temporal circumstances to, be, to, to affect your joy. You say, I don't care. I, I just want this day to pass because tomorrow there is a shift. Tomorrow things going to change. I come to prophesy over you that you will see what belongs. Oh, oh my God. You will see what belongs to you. You will see what belongs to you. I was talking to Apostle Charles one day. He told me something one day. I said, man of God, help me. Help me, Mr. Charles. Help me, help me, help me. 
You see, I'm not too prideful to ask for help. There are some people that are too prideful. And they act like they know what's going on. But they're suffering. Or you can be humble and say, Lord, I need this. I'm not going to pretend that I know it. when I don't, I don't know it, but I'm too prideful to ask for help. So he told me, you need to see your money. You need to see my money. So you need to see your money. Because Jesus has your money. I said, I don't understand this. He said, ask God to open your eyes to see. To see what belongs to you. I know I'm using money as an example. Because money makes you happy. And, and don't pretend I'm not lying. I'm not lying. You know what I'm talking about. Don't try to get all spiritual with me. And start to make crosses. No, no, no. I cast the lying devil out of you. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I was with him one day. He said, you see that? You see that? I said, see what? I see that. A hundred thousand dollars in my account. I said, hey. 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 I said, but I didn't see nothing. He said, I just see, I just see. By the time we get to Providence, his phone was ringing. There was a pastor. What am I talking to? There's a pastor say, man of God, I, I, I just sent in the mail $150,000 for you. I said, eh, hey. I said, lay hands on me, lay hands on me, lay hands on me. <laughs> say, Lord, Holy Spirit. Anoint my eyes so I can see what belongs to me. The verse said, come and buy from me gold. Come and buy from me gold. You buy gold from God with your heart. Which means when your heart is on fire for God, that deposit of faith, you can buy things from God. I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm pressing more into this realm. Let's press more into this realm as a family. I said, let's press more into this realm as a family. So, so you can see what's to come. The Bible said the Holy Spirit will show you what's to come. He will show you. I, I say he will show you. I say he will show you. Because he will, he, he will cause your eyes to be anointed. So you can see. So, so this week we, we want to press into this realm of seeing. I said this realm of seeing. I, I, I shared testimony a lot this morning with you. Uh, uh, of this man from Europe. He's a prophet of God. Say I have eyes. Like a prophet. Say I have eyes. Like a prophet. Because... I'm the prophet of my own life. Say, so I can see like a prophet. So Elisha told this man, he said, Father, open his eyes. He didn't say, give him new eyes. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Bible said that man, eyes were open and he saw what Elisha was seeing. That the whole mountain was surround with the angels of God. Now guess what? Those angels are there already. The Bible said they surround the righteous. They surround the righteous. Come on, talk to me. They surround the righteous. Your eyes need to be open. And when you see things, there will be a dimension of faith. There, 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 there are things that I used to struggle with. I don't struggle with them now. Because I see them. Listen, I already see us in this building. I, you know how many times I preach from this pulpit. That's why I built this stage here. Okay, it was supposed to be over there. I said, no, I want it to be here. Because in a vision, I saw myself preaching from here, not from there. 
So I said, I want the stage to be here. And in my imagination, I see myself preaching from this stage when there were no stage. Because when you see in the realm of the spirit, it is real. And there were no money. There were no money. But it doesn't really matter. Because I see it in my heart already. Like I already see ourselves having two services in front of the Lord. Don't ask me how. I, I don't go there. I, I just, I, Jesus said, I, I, I only testify what I see. You only testify what you see. You don't try to figure out the details. God can take care of the details. Spear me with the details. God can take care of the details. Because sometimes too much details can bring you into unbelief. But hear me here. Like one years ago, I, I was praying for this woman. We were in in in, in um in in no no in um Atlanta. I'm praying for this woman, and all of a sudden, I saw I saw um, kidneys coming to me. I said, I see new kidneys. And she said, Can you explain? I said, I don't explain nothing. I just see kidneys. Just receive the kidneys. Then she, she came back the following day and she tried to convince me she didn't get any kidneys because nothing had changed. Then she wanted me to scientifically explain to her how the kidneys were attached. I said, come on, man. His name is El Shaddai. <laughs> so sometimes the devil will use too much details, come on, to get you out of the realm of exploits. But when you see, it produces confidence. It produces certainty. Like I was, I'm closing here. I, I, was, I was saying, this, 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 this man of God in you, he's a prophet of God. And say, say, I have eyes of a prophet. Say, I have eyes of a prophet. I, I, I can see. Say, I can see. Say, I can see. Believe that. Believe that. Because sometimes, sometimes you, you, your predicament that is, was there, is there, sometimes it's there to intimidate you. But when God show you what's about to happen in two days from now, the present situation wouldn't intimidate you any longer. Uh, so, so this man of God, he... Um, uh, uh, received his testimony. Okay, this really, this really helped my brother. And and he, he asked me, I've seen it. So God spoke to me. He said, get your kidneys. Teach them how to see. Because the more they see, the stronger their faith. Because no one doubts what they see. Let me ask you a question. You ready, go, you ready for the question? Do you believe that I'm here or you know that I'm here? Talk to me. Talk to me. How many believe I'm here? How many believe the pastor is here? How many know pastor is here? You don't believe him. You know I'm here. Because you can see me. And when you see me, you don't doubt. You don't say, you don't say, um, you don't come with, you don't come with, I, I passed Tracy. Yes. Where are you? I'm at church right now. Yes. What's the other question? Is the pastor here? Is the pastor in town? She would ask you, what do you mean? He, he's preaching. I can hear his voice. I'm not really sure. Is it him? Are the pastor? Are the pastor Brian? Is that him? No. You know I'm here. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you know shall make you free. It shall bring you into freedom. Say, Lord, anoint my eyes. Anoint my eyes so I can see. This prophet of God, he said he brought his son home from, from the hospital. He loved the child so, a little boy, loved the child so. And he started to pray. And one time he was praying. He first he had a dream of his son graduating from, univer from college. From college. Receive this, hear this. He said, oh, that's beautiful. 
My son's going to go to college with his, in his uniform, college gown, with his CD degree. And he's still five months old. Wow, that's beautiful. And you keep having the dream. You keep having the visions over and over and over. And this child graduates from college. And the, the, it brings peace and excitement to them. Later on, the child turned like five or six years old. And then one day the child came in and complained about the teacher. She said, I can see. She said, I can see. I have the eyes of a prophet. I can see. Woo! That right there is a testimony of people who are hustling. They say, oh. already see. The child graduate. Who am I talking to? He already see. He have, he have, he have, he have advanced knowledge. Advanced knowledge that the child finishing college and that knowledge you shall know the truth. The truth of seeing the real truth of the child finishing college was so strong it drive out those tumors. The Holy Ghost wants to anoint you to see. And that's why you have to pray. And you come out and you drink. And you drink. Come on. And you sat under the glory that is here. And, and, and all of a sudden the, 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 the anointing starts to drip eyes of beauty, and you move in whatever, whatever yoke it is that is stopping you. Look, look, look at Peter. He prophesied to Jesus. You are the son of God. You are the son of God. You mean you are the Messiah. No one can deny you. That was his prophecy. That was from God. Then Jesus told Peter, hey, I know you said that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But the Son of God is going to go to Jerusalem and they're going to kill me. The Bible said Peter rebuked Jesus and said, you are not going to die. No way. Why? He, he switched to the flesh. You see, the prophetic vision wasn't strong enough to sustain the temptation. God want us in this season to have prophetic vision of what he want us, to, what, what he see for us. And if the immediate temptation, the immediate setback wouldn't cause, who am I talking to? Wouldn't cause us to lose our joy because we already see ourselves in the promised land. We already see ourselves driving the car that you want. Then already, you already see yourself in that ministry. You already see yourself doing what God call you to do so you don't lose your joy. You want to anoint your eyes tonight. The same way the anointing can break the yoke of deafness and physical blindness. It can also break the yoke of spiritual blindness. But God wants you to see. And these last days he wants us to see more. He wants us to see and he wants us to hear. Like Elisha said, I've heard the sound of a There was no sign of rain. But he heard it in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh my God. But we all. With open faces. Beholding. In the glass. The glory of the Lord. And our change. Into the same image. From glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. While we look not. At the things. Which are seen. But at the things. Which are not seen. For the things which are seen. They are temporal. To purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, 
visit our online store at mlmi.org. That's mlmi.org. Or by phone at 1-250-763-2993. Come join us live, Kelowna, BC, Canada, or any of our church locations. And remember, life without purpose is just an experience.